This is the first and only assignment for the fourth quiz in Algebra 2, which deals with formulas. You're going to want to do this whole assignment and check your answers. And there are problems after you solve uh, for each of these formulas for the particular variable it's asking you to solve for. Um, there are problems at the end. So that you go back on and, and refer to. So see exercise six um, for problem 25. So your answer to exercise six is going to be something, whatever H equals, and then you're going to transfer that here and you're gonna actually have numerical values that you're gonna substitute in um, to use that. Maybe I'll do one of those at the end. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. You have to get these correct before you go to that final page. Knowing how to um, solve formulas is a little bit of, of work and it's not as clean cut as sometimes I might make it seem. But for the most part, you can approach it this way. Although there are some formulas that you gotta kind of see forward and then see backwards. So it's kind of like a maze, like you work your way into the center of the maze and then you have to work your way back out. That's so the last problem I'm gonna cover uh, is like that, but most of them can be solved this way. So in general, though this doesn't work on every problem, but on most it does. In general, you want to multiply to remove parentheses. And in that, so I'm gonna zoom in here, if you multiply into a set of parentheses and you replicate the variable, so we're trying to solve for P, I multiplied P in, it gave me P twice. Then you have to back up and divide by whatever expressions multiplied by P to solve. That can happen, and I put it in this, this, this general approach just to uh, make it known. Uh, if when you multiply to remove parentheses, it doesn't replicate the variable, you'll be good. But you generally want to do that on step one. Step two, eliminate denominators. This is huge. The most important thing on these four steps, eliminating denominators. You need to learn how to do that. The SAT makes a giant deal of eliminating denominators, and you need to be very good at it. The third thing is add or subtract expressions to get the term alone on one side that contains the variable you're trying to solve for, and then divide or multiply to isolate that variable. So your variable could be multiplied by six other variables. This could be 4y times a times b times c. So a lot of times that happens in these formulas, and you need to understand what does it mean to isolate. The second part of this has to do with more equation-ish side of things, but I included it in here. So you see the, uh, the inverse steps with trig functions here, how to undo some simple powers. It's kind of part of this. I put it in here a lot. Of, I think I give a couple simple ones on the quiz. Uh, you'll see when you get it, but don't worry too much about this, but it is kind of part of it. So I, I threw it in there. Um, you'll see when it comes up how this works. So you follow the steps I just laid out. Problem two, can we multiply to eliminate any parentheses? We cannot. Can then no denominators to eliminate. So that's done. Step three, I want to isolate the term that contains y alone on one side of the equal sign. What does by equal? You subtract ax, negative ax plus c. And now to isolate y, you divide everything by whatever y is multiplied by. There you go. So if this problem is attached to any problems at the end, you would transfer this to those, I don't think it is, but you would transfer it to that particular problem. Um, not seeing it, but if it was, you'd just transfer it. Problem four is, so I'll actually take it to the back and we'll find it. All right, just follow the idea. Multiply to eliminate parentheses. 
uh, is your first step here. So one half H B1 plus one half H B2. Step two, eliminate denominators. So how is this gonna be done? You need to multiply left to right by two. Everything gets the two. So 2a, and it's going to eliminate the fraction, equals h, b1, plus h, b2. Now, one little note here. So we knocked out the one halves. If we were solving for h, we just replicated it, right? Then what you would have to do is you would have to go back to the previous step, and we would divide both sides by b1 plus b2 then we'd have a half H and then we'd have to multiply by two to solve for H. So always note that if that variable gets replicated that you uh, are trying to solve for, when you multiply to eliminate parentheses, you have to go back to the previous step and divide by the expression that H is multiplied by. Here it's not a problem. So B2 is what we want. So I wanna know what does H times B2 equal? 2a minus h times b1. Now, so we subtract the h times b1 over. We're going to divide both sides by h so that we can get b2 by itself, b sub 2. So 2a minus h times b1 over h. Now, I'm going to go to the back here. So we're using this on um, the exercise four. So we're going to write down the answer here. 2a minus h times b1 over h. 2 times 36 minus um, the height is 4. B1 is 11 over 4. See how that works. The area is 36. The height is 4. I should have used parentheses there. And then the height is 4 on the bottom, and the first base is 11. So you just do that out. Don't forget your little fraction entry tool. 2 times 36 minus 44 divided by 4. So 7 is B2. That's what you do. Um, once you solve these, you just check and see, am I going to use it on the back? If not, you're golden. You move on to the next one. All right, problem five, solve for M. So we're here at the step now. So some of these are one step, and I'm going to talk about them. We have the term isolated. So we can't multiply to remove parentheses, there are no denominators, is the term isolated that contains the variable m, it is. Then we divide to isolate the variable m. It's interesting, I always get the question, what if we're solving for c? Okay, that's coming later on, what to do, then we have to invoke this little bit of stuff that I showed you behind here with the reciprocal power bits. All right, so I'm going to let you do some. I'm not going to do every single one. So variable P on number 10. No parentheses. We don't need to multiply to remove parentheses. First step is to eliminate the, the denominator P. So the second step on our list is to eliminate denominators. And that's what you want to do here on this. I multiply on both sides by P. So P times V equals KT. Now you don't even think when you multiply to eliminate denominators, you do not even think about anything but eliminating that denominator. Just do it. Don't worry about P yet. P is what you're trying to solve for. You're just trying to eliminate the denominator of P. That could have been a different variable. It could have been uh, Z you still eliminate the denominator. It doesn't matter if it's the variable you're solving for or not. You just do it. 
Now, P, so now we worry about P. Here's the term that contains the variable P and to get P by itself, we have to divide by V. And then you're gonna wanna check on um, the end to see if problem 10 is used in any problems at the end for E. So you don't, we don't even worry about anything here, but eliminating the denominator. So step one, multiply to eliminate parentheses. We don't have that. Now we wanna eliminate denominators. Now it just so happens that in eliminating that denominator, we solve, for, we're done. E is alone, it's the term that contains E is, e is solved for, so we're good. All right, Y1. It's a little bit more involved, but we follow the same set of rules on, with the understanding that the denominator is a single entity. So to eliminate it, we're gonna multiply both sides by X2 minus X1. So what we have here is M times X2 minus X1 equals Y2 minus Y1. You can do that. Now, we need to isolate the term that contains Y1. The term that contains Y1 is negative Y1. And so you can, we should multiply over here to eliminate the parentheses there. And now we want to divide by a negative. So you just make all the terms negative over here. You take the opposite plus X1 plus Y2 and you got it. I think, uh, um, on my answer key, I had something different, but that, that's the best way to express that. Uh, it is the same answer. Okay. Moving on, they get a little bit harder as we progress through this, but you follow the same list of rules. So solve for S. So we don't think about anything. We've got to eliminate this denominator of N. Multiply to eliminate parentheses, then eliminate denominators. So N times D equals C minus S. Now we want to isolate the term that contains a variable S. And so that's negative S. So it's N times D minus C. We got to subtract C over to the left and then divide by negative one everywhere. <clears throat> so you just make the uh, signs opposite in doing that. Problem 15, very first thing we're gonna do is multiply the five ninths through. Now, the what I show you is not the only way to do this. There are multiple ways to attack as long as it's valid algebra, there's multiple ways to attack this. So now I'm going to multiply through by nine everywhere. So to eliminate denominators, so 9C equals 5F minus 160. That's a lot cleaner to work with that. The nines drop. The hard thing about eliminating denominators is it looks different all the time. It has this look in this problem, and that's because the expressions are just written differently each time. So now you want to isolate the variable. So what does 5F equal? 9C plus 160, add 160 to both sides, and then divide by five to get. So some textbooks will divide this out. We'll say 9 fifths C plus 32. Either way, it will work. Problem 18. So very first thing, we want to multiply to eliminate 
parentheses. So, oh, but look what it does. We replicate R when we do that. So that's not something we want to do. So in backing up, what I'm going to do first is to multiply both sides by 100. And then we'll take a look at it. You can multiply to eliminate denominators first, and that's probably what I should have had for the first step. Now, if we multiply the R through, it gives 100R minus Rx. It replicates the variable. So remember me showing you this on the first little bit of your notes. You have to go backwards okay, and divide to isolate it. So you're going to divide by this expression. So we have to divide by 100 minus x. It's a little bit awkward in how it works, but we don't want to replicate the variable. So it's 100d over 100 minus x. And then again, check on the back to see if that's used in any of the problems. Problem 19, solve for t. So we're at the step here where we want to isolate the term that contains it. There's the term that contains t. I want to get it alone on one side, so we subtract p. And now we're going to divide by p times r to get the t alone. You can do that. This is a problem on your quiz where you got to solve and then you got to substitute in. Problem 23, so notice now we're solving for R. So we want to isolate the variable. This time we're isolating the power statement that contains R. So what do we do now? So this is part of working with formulas. How do we get, you square root it, but what if that was R to the 2 sevenths power? So what I say is it's always to the reciprocal power, so you make it one. That does mean square root in this case. So this is going to be R here. It is the same thing, but you want to think reciprocal because what if that, again, is a power other than two? So you want to make this a power of one. And that's what this, this second page was about here. A lot of the, that's what all of number five is saying here. We're not, you're not going to have to worry about the logarithm stuff down here. But know that that is literally part of this concept. So this is the final. Problem 24, at last. So here's one where it just... Um, there isn't a, a good way to show you this. So this giant square root means everything to the one half power. So we would square that to get, you know, at the expressions underneath. And that's kind of a first thing. Second thing is you got to kind of be able to see how this is built from, so it lifts off that square root. So this whole right side was to the one half power. When you square both sides, it lifts it up. But you got to kind of see, all right, so how is, um, you know, if we start at X2 and then we build this right side, we got to undo that build. So we started with X2, we subtracted X1. So that's like going to be the last step at X1. And then we squared that. So we got to like square root. And then we added this, this big expression on the end. So here's one that kind of falls a little bit out of, out of line. So you need to subtract this big expression on both sides. Now I'm going to write it this time. I, I typically haven't been showing this work. So d squared minus y2 minus y1 squared equals we want to add x2, x sub 2. So now we have to square root both sides again to get at the x2 minus x1. So that 
removes, when we do that, it removes the square root, just like in the beginning where we squared. So what I'm telling you, here's one that really doesn't kind of follow the, the list of things that I had for you. And then add x1 on the end, and you have it. So x2 is this giant square root here plus x1. And so this is kind of a hodgepodge of all of those things that I showed you. Square both sides in the beginning to get at what's underneath here. Then you want to kind of isolate this expression that contains the x2. Then you got to square root it. So it's inverse steps to finally get at x2. So there's one that doesn't follow exactly that list of rules. But that's one out of, you know, a hundred that do okay out of so 99 out of 100 do follow that list of the rules that i gave you so note that there are ones um that you have to just use you know um kind of working from the outside in i guess is the best explanation to get down to what you want to get to and uh, as long as you do the same thing to both sides and do correct inverse um, operations on both sides you should get to um what you need to get to. This definitely is not going to be on a quiz, but it might be something, you know, if you go into pre-calc that you find yourself um, in the midst of having to do. So don't forget to check the end pro the problems at the end here and complete those. So you'll transfer your answer over just like I showed you here and substitute all the values into your answer. And that should, um, work out to be uh, the answer, the correct answer. So that's the one loan assignment for the fourth quiz. You do want to do all of these because uh, this is live practice with real formulas and it's very common. Um, it's a very common type of math work in other classes, especially science classes.